Last week, I went out to the J.P. Morgan Healthcare Conference in San Francisco, checked in with 13 companies. But there are other presenters that I didn't get a chance to speak with. Take Alonco Animal Health, which makes medicine and vaccines for both pets and livestock. Alonco has a bunch of exciting products in its pipeline that should be approved in the first half of the year. One reason the stock's already rebounded, get this, is nearly 90% from its all-time low set last year. Full disclosure, Alonco was spun off by Eli Lilly roughly five years ago. It took a very little time for the stock to find its footing. But after the incredible run over the past few months, can it keep going? Let's check a closer look with Jeff Simmons. He's the president and CEO of Alonco Animal Health. For more, Mr. Simmons, welcome back to Mad Money. Hey, great to be here, Jim. Thanks for the opportunity. Okay, like if we were speaking about a drug stock, we have to speak about unmet needs and we have to speak about potential blockbusters. And I want you to talk about a pipeline as if it were a, a company dedicated to human health. Yeah, so this is our 70th year, but I would say the most exciting pipeline. We're bringing six blockbusters over the next two years. And to the describe Atlanta. what a blockbuster means to people. Yeah, a blockbuster in, in animal health can be over 100 million. Perfect. Okay? okay. And major markets. Just came from the North America Vet Show talking about unmet needs. Today, 800 to 900 puppies a day get diagnosed with parvovirus. If left Parvo. Parvovirus, Parvo right. Virus. If left untreated, more than 90% end in mortality, Jim. We now have our first monoclonal antibody approved last year. We're launching it across America. Just signed a pledge with the American veterinarians across this country to save a million puppies by the end of the decade. So there's an example of, you know, left untreated, you've got 900 puppies a day that are, that are ending in mortality. We now have an intervention. And that's what's driving the expectancy of care to continue to grow. I pets. think people should realize, I mean, some of the diseases that afflict humans, my, uh, my daughter is a, works at, at, with a shelter and been losing cats to diabetes. Yeah. So last year, Elenco brought the first SGLT2 to the U.S. market as a, uh, as a remedy for, for diabetes. If you have a cat before this technology, you were having to inject that with insulin right. um, twice a day. We have, we've introduced a tablet with Bexacat, a vanilla tablet that can be used once a day. So more convenience also drives, you know, not only more expectancy of care, but more willingness to pay. That's what's caused this industry to grow 20 consecutive years. Now, you also, of course, obviously, you have animal health. I, I, well, we've been talking about companion, but you've got a very big business for, to, that helps us feed the world. Yeah. Um, so, Elanco, if you back up, I mean, we, we grew up in the farm animal business. That's, you know, in 70 years, we spent a lot of time. Um, we also, though, if, you know, with the acquisition of Bayer after we became an IPO, we moved from 30% farm animal to over 50% pets. So, we're balanced between pet. We also have increased size and scale with Bayer. Bayer brought us a much bigger international pet business. It made us, a, you know, having more scale allowed us to have a much more competitive innovation engine that's brought these six blockbusters as but well. But, Jeff, you've also mentioned you've got a lot of debt. I'm always concerned about companies that have a lot of debt. You even were asked about it on the conference call, and you said yourself, we've got to get that debt down. Yeah, it is a priority for us. Um, I think a couple things you need to look at for, you know, for Elanco is, one, most of that debt we've locked into fixed rates. So we're taking some of the volatility out. The other is, Jim, a lot of stand-up costs the last three to four years with Elanco. We not only stood ourselves up out of Eli Lilly, but we had to integrate with Bayer. They're behind us. It's less than $20 million this year. So we'll convert a lot more EBITDA into cash to convert that and pay debt down. And these major blockbusters are higher margins in big markets, faster growth rates, much higher mix. That's going to create a lot more EBITDA. And we've changed the pay for all employees. To have more of an EVA-like structure to where every employee in Elanco is compensated by driving EBITDA and using right. cash very carefully. So it is a top priority. It's a durable industry. You know this, Jim. Yes, I do. So uh, debt, debt is a priority, but it's not something that needs to be of a concern. Okay, well, speaking of cash, these are cash pay situations often, correct? Right. Yes. So the, the market yourself. Yeah. yeah. And people have to see, but they want value. Uh, it, unlike for humans, it's like, well, will I get value for my pet if I pay? Yeah, and I think that's what's made this industry attractive. Yes. It rewards innovation, like your daughter, mm -hmm. your reference of this. I also think this. We have multiple species. We're in more than 20 species of animals in Elanco. We're in more than 100 countries and many therapeutic classes. That diversity creates a lot of durability against all this volatility that you're mentioning, which makes this industry, you know, resilient and durable. We've just guided to, you know, constant currency revenue growth going forward, um, you know, in 2024. And a lot of that's because of even in a volatile environment, 
you know, what we've got with Bayer plus Elanco is a diverse company that can handle the volatility okay. in the marketplace. Let's talk about COVID and post-COVID. Uh, there was a huge humanization of pets move, got to COVID, and then it really exploded because people wanted pets at home because they were lonely. I'm getting the sense that there was a peak in humanization of pets. Is that true, or is it just because not many people, as many people were as adopting as they were? You know, I, we look at this, and how we look at this, Jim, is we look at it globally. Okay. But I would say... The humanization of pets is still happening, you know, and in America, we've got about 70 percent of homes with a pet, you know, in a lot of international countries, it's 20, 30 percent. So one, the humanization of pets is still growing globally. Okay. Second is this next generation's expectancy of care and willingness to spend is high. If you bring innovation and you bring convenience right. to them, then that actually is driving resilience to pay. And the last thing is what Elanco's leading in right now is what we call the omni-channel approach. And that is saying, hey, in and outside the vet, from online to the pet store to in the vet clinic, Elanco is the global leader in pet retail. We can do, you know, brands like Advantage and Soresto outside right. the vet. A third of pet owners in America don't go to the vet. Yeah, well, this is just criminal, so, so, I think, because they yeah. can't tell you they're sick, for heaven's sake. Show some compassion. But, but having remedies for them is still essential. And right. then we're bringing all of this in innovation inside of the vet. So Elanco, the global omni-channel leader, and that also is another way to, I think, keep the resiliency in this market and continues to grow. Okay, do you have anything for feline immunodeficiency virus. They had a vaccine in this country, took it off the market in 2017, would be a very big market. Any chance? Yeah, I, I can't speak specifically to that. What I would say is there's a lot of research going on in autoimmune, a yes. lot in the bio space. Um, there's a continued You guys are doing it or everybody's doing it? You know, it's, it's a target for a few of us right. as companies. What I will say, Jim, is right now in Elanco, back to the priority, right. Six major blockbusters. We got a, a, a first, you know, a, a first entry into the auto, you know, immune kind of market. Excuse me, the derm market. Um, that's that's going to be critical. Which which we know. You know Z Zoetis has great work. It's done great stuff in derm. They have. It's a 1.2 billion dollar market. Right. Growing double digit. It only has a couple options. It's the number one reason pet owners take a dog to the sure. vet is an itching dog. And we are bringing an alternative. We are bringing a differentiated asset in there with a JAK1 inhibitor. Next year, we'll have a monoclonal antibody. So Great. this is a market that's looking for alternatives. And lastly, we've got Credelio Quattro. So the largest market, as you know, is the parasite market, right. the parasiticide. We're bringing Credelio Quattro, which is really the broadest spectrum market. So it's flea tick and a broad spectrum of hard right. work. We'll so get that debt paid down, keep the, uh, the earnings growth, and spread the word around the world. And I know we didn't even get, next time we'll get to what you're doing with the environment yeah. and carbon credit and cows, because that's very important, too. That's Jeff Simmons. He's president and CEO of Alonco Animal Health. I think the stock's ready to take off, and the 90% gain is really off a very low level. Man, money's back at the break. Coming up, a kinder, gentler energy outlook. Kramer gasses up his take on a pipeline player that could power you to prosperity. Next.